Welcome back, everyone, to Poppin' Off the Will Often. Today, 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 we're gonna be doing a tank guide. Yes, a beginner's tank guide. I'm not really gonna go into all the secrets and tips and tricks that I do, unless I obviously see it in the gameplay, but I just wanna get you guys the basics. I wanna get you guys to just get started, get your feet wet, you know what I mean? I chose a dungeon that's pretty difficult for new players, um, even new tanks, and Experienced player is new to tank. It's just a difficult dungeon and it's also just not a spoiler dungeon because it's something that's free to everybody I, It's part of heaven sword and I, and I did that on purpose I wanted it to be a dungeon where it wasn't gonna spoil anything for you guys. So I thought this dungeon allows For a basic amount of cooldowns and then it also allows for a just kind of a difficulty here So first things first what we notice is that people are watching cutscenes perfectly fine. We just wait a um, little fun fact for you if you are synced down, your stance will go off. So let's say I do a dungeon that's level 30, and then I have to go to a dungeon that's level 20. It's gonna be off and I have to turn it back on. Um, if it's like I'm doing a dungeon level 30, and then it, I do a 40, it's gonna stay on. It's very weird, but it is what it is. Um, just don't forget to turn it on. I, <laughs> I used to forget to turn it on a lot, and I would just run in there, but uh, yeah. So my name is with quickness. Um, and I, and I usually stick true to that name. The way that I run dungeons, I run them very, very fast. But I run them efficiently. And it's a big difference between just over pulling and actually understanding how much you can pull based off you and the person that's healing you. So I always do a countdown to let people know I'm about to, it's about to hit the fan. So I do a countdown and I'm gone. Instantly, as soon as it says start, I'm out, right? And people can choose. And one thing I notice is that people can choose to sprint with me or not. But I will pay attention to that all the time and I will notice where they are. Because if I feel like they're not sprinting with me, what I'll do is I'll pull and then I'll loop back and then I'll just kind of sit, wait, wait for them to catch up and then I continue moving, right? If they are sprinting with me, well then I'll just keep going. So rule one, be aware of everything, of your team's you know, mana, your team's HP, your team's position and everything, just be aware. Your job as a tank is to make sure that everybody is okay. People think jobs as a tank is just aggro everything. No, no, no. Your job as a tank is to make sure that everyone's okay. Is to make sure that your healers and your DPS don't have to move too much. It's literally to make sure to make their lives easier. That's your job to be an effective tank. To just tank, you could, you know, you could just kind of grab a mob and go. Um, FF doesn't really penalize you for doing anything poor. There are obviously poor tanks, poor DPS, and poor healers. Like you see it. There's poor everything in every game, right? Um, and then there's like just average, and then there's like really good. And in Final Fantasy, it's really cool because you can tell who's a really, really good tank, really, really good DPS, really, really good healer because it's it's very rare to find one. Anyway, I go in there and I know for some reason that frog is in a weird spot. So I just like let it sit there, but I just know I have to deal with it later. So I instantly run, I instantly grab these and uh, boom, as soon as I turned around, I noticed right here, my one of my teammates went the wrong way, I guess and they grabbed two minions, or two monsters. I already know this one I have to deal with, he's looking at it, I just, I just know, I gotta deal with this one. But they aggro, so I'm like, oh boy. And it sucks because I, that makes me over aggro, because if I'm already limiting myself that much I can pull, and I don't really know how much the healer can take, I, I, I like have to over pull here. So I paid attention. Why did I instantly grab the aggro, instead of just letting that person die, letting the monsters reset? The thing you have to realize is that if the healer notices you and someone else is low, they're going to be a little bit flustered. And if all of y'all are low, they're gonna be super flustered. Because look at the positioning of everybody. The healer's AOE doesn't reach this far. So he's gonna have to pick and choose. Who am I healing? If he let, if he only heals the DPS, he's gonna let me die and everybody's gonna die. If he only heals me, the DPS is gonna die and he might get attacked. So once again, like I said, they're, they're flustered. Just just make their, everybody's lives easier. That's your job. You just remember, make everybody's lives easier, you'll be a great tank. So I'm grabbing everything, uh, and um, I'm getting low, <laughs> of course. I know this frog has a move that is an AOE move, so I wait for him to use it, I'm already locked on, and I'm going to stun him. That's a big thing, use your stun. Use it to reduce damage, but also use it on things that you know are gonna have your team moving, or have you moving. If you can just stun them out of it, it's good. Also, you can use something called interrupt. I know a lot of tanks don't use it, it's this one right here. If this is glowing red, you can use interrupt and it will stop them from casting. 
It has to glow red. It's one of those things where once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you don't see it, you'll be like, I, don't, I never see it. But if you pay attention, you'll see some monsters do it and you'll be like, oh, now I know what it is. It'll be flashing red um, and white. So when you see that, use interject and it will stop them from casting. And then you can even stun them after too. It's, it's really good, but it just not all monsters do it. So I stun them. And then one thing you notice is I'm starting to kite. A lot of people think kiting doesn't work in this game. Kiting definitely works in this game. You have to realize the monsters hit you and then they move. Unless they're ranged, if they're ranged, good luck kiting those, but you know. If they're not ranged, they have to move to get to you. And that's the amount, that can determine a, a wipe, right? So I'm like cutting it a little bit because I know he needs to be, He need, I need to buy time for him to cast multiple times. So I'm cutting back, I'm cutting back, I'm cutting back. And you see, I walk, it's micro steps. You don't want to run all the way across the map. You want to micro step yourself. Cut, walk back a little bit, stop, stop. Stop. Pretty much you can think of it like walk back, let everything hit you, walk back, let everything hit you, walk back. As you see, look how far they are, right? And they have to walk up to get to me. You see they're walking? Look how low I get. But because I'm kiting it backwards, I don't die. I'm at 7 HP because I literally kited backwards for them to stop hitting me for half a second so my healer can pop that. It's important to know what you can and can't do it. It's important to understand when you have to do it. A lot of people think, well, just grab them out and sit there in one spot. You're gonna have to take the initiative sometimes. Tank isn't just sitting in one spot. I mean, like I said, if you wanna be just kind of an average tank, it's perfectly fine. Grab the limited amount and then, you know, sit in a spot. But like I said, that's not me. I've ran over, what, I don't know, like 3,000 dungeons. Like I, I, I like to be fast and I like to be efficient. Fast does not mean wipe your team because you pull the whole dungeon and the healer can't keep up and you can't stay alive. That's not the same thing. So, as I said, I'm not going to go over things like that in this video because, like, that'd be too long. I'm just going to go over the basics. So, as you see, I grab the ranged um, monsters and I walk behind this rock. Why do I walk behind this rock? Because if I walk behind this rock, it will break their line of sight. Breaking their line of sight means they have to go in the same position that the melee one is in and we can clump them together. If the range is here and the melee is here and you're AOEing here, the range is never going to get hit. Break the line of sight if you can, sometimes you can't, and it will make them go together and then you can kill them all at the same time, be efficient. Now, after that, I get them low um, and then once I, I notice my teammates grab more, so you know I'm forced to grab more. Once again, just always be aware. And uh, one little quick tip too is that if this is red, that means the monsters are aggroing you. If it's yellow, that means it's about to aggro someone else. If it's green, that means it is aggroing someone else. You need to target it and, and get it off of them. Because sometimes people don't run to you. The thing is, like, healers and DPS are supposed to run to you, so you can just, like, AOE and hit everything, but sometimes they don't. And if you don't pay attention, you might look, you, they, they might end up dying without you even knowing it. So we get them low here, and one thing you want to realize is you can cross that purple line. When you cross that purple line and you can drag the monsters to the um, to the boss. And I just think it's a little bit more efficient. Not only are you, you know, letting your team hit them while you're dragging them to the boss and you're not taking any damage because they have to walk the whole entire time. Um, you're also making it a smooth transition from the minions to the boss. So one thing that you notice here is that when I'm getting hit by the AOE, I actually move out the way, right? Instead of stunning it. You can stun it, but I move out the way. Why? Because look, if I notice that once again, like I said, you, you want to make sure your team isn't going to have to move that much. I don't know who this is, but I know they have to move. So I'm going to hit it and not waste my stun on me. I don't mind moving and going back. Three other players is a little bit difficult, especially if they're casters. If they're ranged casters, they're going to have to move and interrupt their cast. You don't want that. You want them to always cast, always cast. And to do that, you need to make sure they don't have to move that much. Position the boss in a way they don't have to move that much and really make it easy on them. Make it easy on the party so that you can have it easier. Like if, if let's say it was targeting the melee, I'd, keep, I'd stun it too because I don't want the, the melee have to get off and ruin their rotation and then get back on. Very important you pay attention and very important you, you know that your team comes first before you. This is a pretty good example. You see my team is way back there. I'm the only one sprinting. My team is not even here. You see they're gray. And so I need to, I, I know that I need to stay alive long enough for them to catch up. But I also know that I'm not gonna die. So, I won't pull, like, let's say there's more, there's another mob, like another pack over there that I would have pulled if they are with me. I wouldn't pull it until they caught up because I know I can stay alive long enough for them to catch up. Once again, you don't want to burn everything. You only want to burn some stuff. So I still have this. I still have this. Um, I burn this. Um, and I also burn those two, right? 
So you want to spread out your cooldowns. You don't need to usually use all of them at the same time. The main ones that I use is arm's length and uh, I forgot what that one is. But arm's length and then that purple one. <laughs> Those are the two that I mainly use. Honestly, when you get to the higher dungeons, people don't really need, need to, to, to debuff yourself that much. I mean, not debuff, I'm sorry, buff yourself that much. So right here, you'll notice me grab a pack and then I move to the next one. And I don't walk over there because I don't want to aggro those two. I only want to aggro the ones in front and drive them back. Remember, everything is kind of in packs in this game. So if you can kind of tell what's a pack and what's not a pack, you'd have an easier time pulling it out and just dragging it to you. I noticed this, this guy was like <laughs> having me low a lot. And I was just assuming like, maybe you're having issues. And I was like, I don't think you have an issue. So I checked his gear. He synced down. If you check someone's gear and it has an S next to it, it means they're synced which means that they're actually a lot stronger than the dungeon. Like they're the tippy top strength of the dungeon will allow. So he's letting me get low just because. And some healers do that so they can maximize their DPS. I'm fine with it just as long as I don't die. So once again, I, uh, drag, the, uh, I drag the creeps into the boss. I always ping people to limit break because sometimes people forget or sometimes people just don't have it. And so they'll like put it on for me because I asked them to. And uh, they'll do it for me. So people might get mad at you for, for pinging it. I usually only ping it three times. I'm like, ding, 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 and then see if anybody do it. If nobody does it, then I'll just limit break myself because usually what will happen is uh, you can have another limit break by the time you get to the boss or like by the time the boss is almost dead, you can have two limit breaks and it's like, why we why not just use that one? Because you're just wasting one. Limit breaks, I've noticed, depending on how good your party is, damage wise, the limit breaks. Limit break is like a crutch. I've noticed that FF will do. Um, if your damage is a little bit low, though, your limit break will go up kind of fast. Um, if your damage is high, your limit break will go up really slow. Um, honestly, though, it could be the same speed and it's just we're clearing a lot faster than limit break can catch up. But uh, I've noticed like if the game thinks you're struggling, it, the limit break does go up quite a bit. So, you know, could just be placebo. I don't know. So right here, this is very important. Everybody's aggroing everything. It's not really what I wanted. Um, it wasn't an overpool for me. It was more like just everybody was aggroing. So I do end up dying here. Now, one thing you want to note is that I know this isn't an overpool. This is not an overpool. I just know the the healer made a mistake. And he instantly swift cast me up. Healers, you can swift cast another ability. You don't have to swift cast the res. You can swift cast anything. Like, use your swift cast more often. Um, I'm not blaming that guy or anything. I'm just saying like that's, that's a useful tip that I do when I heal is I swift cast a lot of abilities because it can come back up so many, so, so quick it can come back up. So I, I get up, I grab everything. Like I said, I just, I just knew that I wasn't in any danger. I knew that um, I could grab everything and we'll be all right. So we're good, we're good. Going to the next area. And I don't wanna drag these, I don't wanna drag this pack into the boss fight of the final boss because there's a cutscene. You wanna be respectful for people in a cutscene. Um, yeah, this guy says, giving me a workout. And the other dude said, uh, Skill testing. People know when you're when you're doing a lot better. Um, DPS, yeah, I notice. So, um, and then he says he's rusty. You know, he's playing rusty on playing uh, Astro. It's all good. But that it says viewing cutscenes. So I wait. After everybody's done, we go in. Um, pretty much the same thing. Just taking the boss. One thing that I will say is I pinged this dude to limit break. Why did I do that? Because I knew he was safe. One thing you don't want to do is ping someone to limit break, have them be in a crappy spot, and then <laughs> then them insta die because you told them limit break and they did it. I've seen it happen and I've done it before where I ping someone to do it and they just die in a skill shot. You want to make sure the boss already used something. Usually when the boss used something, it's a cooldown period of a couple seconds and then they can cast the limit break. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the main thing I think as a tank that you want to just kind of focus on is just being aware. You know, make sure that you're paying attention to everything around you, the positioning, the manas and stuff like that. Um, also, you want to pay attention um, to making everybody's life easier. That's that's the best part about being a tank. And you just want to be efficient. You know, don't overpool if you if you can't handle it yourself. And pay attention to your to your healer. They won't magically heal faster if randomly. If you notice they're not healing that well, um, maybe your gear is low. Gear is very low. I've had healers that had really good gear, but I had terrible gear because I was leveling something, and um, they couldn't heal me. Right? That's not on them. That's on me. And so if you need to pay attention to that, because if you pull one pack and they're struggling, don't pull two, don't pull three if they were already struggling on pack one. So very important. That's my final piece. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see DPS or if you guys want to see a healer or if you guys just want to see a specific job guide, maybe I'll make a job guide sometime, uh, let me know. But thank you guys for watching. Until next time, you know what I always say. Thank you for what? Popping often.
We're locked in. Yeah, yeah.